In my first video, I took four pieces of eighth inch Baltic birch plywood, glued them together, and cut out a deck for my longboard in my electric longboard build. After riding the board around for a while, I'm really happy with this design, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the deck in this video. This deck was so dirty from me riding it around for about a month or so that the first thing I did was take a scrub brush and some soapy water and cleaned it really good. Then I went over the deck with 80 grit sandpaper with my palm sander and then I went over the edges also with 80 grit and then I went back over it and got the thing smooth to the touch with 120 grit sandpaper. After the sanding was done, the next thing to do was go over the deck with some primer. I just use a generic outdoor primer. All I wanted to do is create a better bond for my paint. Because I brushed the primer on instead of painting it, I had to go back once again with 120 grit sandpaper and sand the thing super smooth. Now I could have gone insane and gone all the way up to 600 grit for almost a car-like finish, but I'm just really trying to make this deck look pretty decent while also trying to protect the wood from any future weather and all of the rocks and stuff that'll ding it when I'm riding it. Just trying to get a good protective coat on it. Aesthetics are important, but at the end of the day, the person that sees the bottom of the board the most is the road, and I don't really feel like impressing the road, so this is all that I'm gonna do. And grip tape covers the top, so it doesn't matter how smooth or how good I get the top to look either. Next, I was ready to paint the deck. I'm actually using the same spray paint that I used to paint the wheels on my truck. The formula is just better designed for outdoor applications that are gonna be put in harsh environments. It's a glossy protective enamel is what it's called. You really have to read the directions on whatever spray paint you buy because the directions for all kinds of paint vary a ton. For spray angle, for how many coats you can put on, how frequent you can put coats, how close to be, how far away to be, how many coats to have, it just varies by spray paint, so you really have to look at the directions. With this particular spray paint, it's said to do two to three light coats per coat, and so I went over lightly a first time just to get the thing covered very gently, then I went over the second time for full coverage, and then I went back a third time and did a full coat. Each of these are about two to three minutes apart. And I did two complete coats per side of the deck. When you're spray painting, you're always wanting to make sure that you're doing light strokes back and forth, never stopping or starting on the workpiece itself. And always make sure you're the correct distance away from the workpiece as, as the directions say on your spray paint. That way you don't have any runs. We're also not wasting paint. So this is the clear coat that I used both on my truck wheels and on my skateboard. It's an automotive finish, but really what I was going for was just something that was gonna protect the paint on my board while also acting as a sunblock and as an exterior finish that was gonna hold up against all of the dings it's gonna receive from rocks, all the water and all the other chemicals they use on roads and whatnot. I will say though that you do have to follow the directions exactly Otherwise, it won't dry correctly and it actually won't stick. But if you wanted to use polyurethane or a spar varnish, just something that was designated as an exterior finish, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as you have something that's gonna protect the paint and act as a sunblock to prevent it from fading. Now I was ready to apply my grip tape. I bought this grip tape for a really good deal on Amazon with Prime. You just want to make sure you're getting longboard grip tape and not skateboard grip tape so you know it's long enough. I got red because I want to be able to spot my longboard amongst other dark things easily. And also red is kind of like the theme of my board. It's going to get dirty, but I wanted the red. So the first thing I did was set the longboard on top of the grip tape, marked it out, and roughly cut out the shape of the longboard on the grip tape. Then I took the backing off of the grip tape and put the grip tape on the skateboard. I didn't have a roller or anything to smooth it out, so I just took a roll of duct tape and tried to smooth it the best I could just so I could get the air bubbles out. This grip tape sticks really well, but I just wanted to get every single air bubble out. Then I literally took a wrench just so I could mark up the edges of my longboard so that way I'd have something to guide off of when I used my razor blade. And the razor blade honestly was the worst decision I ever made when it came to cutting out this grip tape. What I wish I would have done was just have 
lined out exactly what I wanted on the back of the grip tape with a marker or something and then cut it out with scissors or a laser cutter or something else and then tried to line it up on top of the board. The reason that cutting the grip tape out with a razor blade is so difficult is because I have a round over over all of the edges on my longboard. Some longboards do, some longboards don't. I had one on mine. It just makes it incredibly difficult to line up where the exact edge is with the razor blade and, that's be and so I'm not able to cut as smooth leaving a lot of rough edges and a lot of cleanup for me to do and touch up paint. To clean up, I cut off all of the overhanging pieces of grip tape and then I took some touch up paint and went over the entire edge of the board, get, smoothing out the grip tape edges while also going over the places where I had dinged up the paint. Then I took some satin clear coat and clear coated the edges to protect them and then I found that the clear coats weren't matching and so then I went ahead and put another coat of clear coat all over the bottom of the deck, or at least the exposed areas, basically having now two sets of clear coat on the back. So now that the deck is done, I can finally get with it on the rest of this build. This is actually video number three of this video tutorial series. I appreciate you watching this thus far. Now we're finally gonna get into the parts and some of the electronics and the build process to build my electric skateboard. Look for those videos to come out really, really soon. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else you want me to talk about in this build, leave a comment below or message me. I'll make a video about it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next build.